Instead of a knot, either get a shorter lanyard or reduce your free fall distance to minimize the impact on the system. Tying off around rough or sharp surfaces such as I or H beams also threatens lanyard security. Any sharp surfaces can weaken or cut the lanyard under the impact of a fall arrest, possibly causing it to fail when it is needed. Tie-off devices are also available for beams, rails, and other potential anchorages. To protect the lanyard, use padding on sharp or rough surfaces, or use an abrasion-resistant strap. Locking snap hooks are required on all personal fall protection to prevent opening from accidental causes such as rollout. Rollout takes place when a lanyard or any object presses against the keeper during a fall, allowing the lanyard to slip out of the hook. Locking prevents rollout by requiring intentional release before the hook will open. D-rings should be large compared to hooks, so the ring will reach beyond the hook's keeper rather than pressing against it. After attaching the snap hook, make sure it is secure and locked, and that accidental rollout is impossible. Harnesses must fit snug. If your harness is too loose, it could slip from you in a fall. Before you put on your harness, inspect it for frayed webbing, broken fibers or cuts, distorted D-rings, cracks, rough or sharp edges on metal parts, unusual wear where the buckle attaches, tongue or grommet condition, and a safely working buckle. Next, hold the harness by the back D-ring and shake the straps into place. Release straps and slip them over your shoulders so the D-ring is located in the middle of the back between your shoulder blades. Pull the leg strap between your legs and connect it to the opposite end. The waist strap should be tight but not binding. Connect the chest strap and position it in the middle of your chest. Check for snug fit that allows full movement. To keep from doubling over sideways or backwards in a fall, connect your harness either in the center of the back at the shoulder level or above your head. Ladder safety devices are designed so you can have both hands free for climbing. The connection between the device carrier's lifeline and your belt cannot be more than 23 centimeters long. This limits free fall, but it's enough to let you climb in a normal position. Do not climb while holding objects. Use either belt hooks or a rope hoist to pull up tools and materials. Once you have fallen and your fall protection system has saved you, you must be rescued safely and quickly. Your employer should have a rescue plan in place, which includes rescue by co-workers, a way of summoning a rescue squad, or some combination of these methods. All effective rescue systems involve advanced planning. Make sure you know what your company's rescue plan calls for. You should be familiar with rescue equipment at your facility, such as ladders, hoists, man lifts, or ropes, and have some practice using it. You should also know how to contact outside help quickly in an emergency. Rescue personnel should know what steps to take depending on the circumstances and the rescue plan. Prepare any medical equipment that will be needed to transport the victim. Once you reach the victim, try to lower him as safely as possible. Remain calm. This helps you think clearly and it helps keep the victim calm as well. Move the victim carefully to avoid making head, neck or back injuries worse. Defective equipment can kill you. The few minutes it takes to inspect your equipment before each shift can save your life. Worn defective equipment should be taken out of service and handled according to facility policy to prevent future use. Equipment used in a fall or that has otherwise suffered shock must be inspected by a competent person before it can be used again. Follow your facility procedures for safely maintaining and storing your personal fall protection equipment. In general, equipment should be stored away from excessive heat, sunlight, chemical reaction, and welding splatter. Don't leave your equipment where people or vehicles can run over it. Metal elements need protection from corrosion and crushing. Never allow your personal fall protection equipment to be used for hoisting materials or tools. Personal fall protection systems can save your life.
from lifeline to lanyard to harness, your employer will provide the equipment and instruct you in its use and care. Do your part by using and maintaining it properly. You have a choice. You can stop your fall at the end of a lanyard or on the ground. Be smart. Stay on top.